Hangover. That's oh. right. Welcome to the After Party Hangover. I'm your host, Mangria Fuel, and this is the show that talks about a show that talks about a show. Today, we have the man who rose to Steel Real After Party fame with his Survivor Series story and his regular appearances on the Instagram and Facebook questions. Ladies and gentlemen, hashtag we got one. It's Mr. <laughs> underscore. What's going hey, on, man? What's happening, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How's your day going? I was good. I got stuck in a little traffic and saw your message and pulled over into a baker's parking lot. So <laughs> let's do this thing. Uh, well, explain to the people's your Instagram name. I'm pretty sure it's straightforward, but just for those who are curious. Uh, yeah, my last name is Tryon, and I'm a mister. So I put an underscore in between it. And... Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, how did you start watching wrestling? What, what, what led you down the road to WWE or professional wrestling as it is? Oh, uh, well, it started off with uh, WCW, actually. I oh, was yeah. in the, I believe I was in the fourth grade and just happened to be flipping through the channels and saw some scary looking guy with white and black face paint on and a scorpion on his shirt and i'm like this guy's awesome and started watching and <laughs> um only wa i watched for a little bit and then even as a 10 year old i was smart enough to realize that vince russo was an idiot and so i stopped yeah. watching and then uh got into middle school and had a little group of friends that we all we were all talking about wrestling so i was like i'll start watching again and i've been hooked ever since what do you tell people when you get that annoying person that comes up to you and goes, you know, it's fake, right? Um, well, last time I got that, it was from a Game of Thrones fan. And I was like, you know, they're not real dragons, right? <laughs> well, that, that, that's different. Exactly. What a hypocrite. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, just shut up and let me watch it. That's that's my favorite response. So you're saying you're, you, were, you started out a Stinger fan and not a Hogan yes. fan. Yes. Oh, nice. No, I, yeah, I was, I was always Team Sting. How did you discover the Still Real After Party podcast? Um, I went in the search bar on Instagram one day, and uh, I was uh -huh. following a couple of different wrestling pages, and then Still Real to Us popped up. And I was scrolling through it. I'm like, man, these memes are pretty funny. And so I followed the, the page, and then <laughs> I, saw, I saw they kept putting links to the podcast on there. And so one day uh -huh. I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to it. And that's when it was still real radio. And, you oh, know, I yeah, listened yeah. to it. I listened yep. to that thing religiously every Wednesday on my way home from work. I couldn't wait to listen to the still real radio. And then, you know, it just disappeared out of nowhere. Same, same here. Yeah, then. Exactly. It disappeared. And I just kept looking back, looking back, searching, trying to find it. Refreshing, refreshing. Yep, all constantly. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear this thing about the still real after party. And to be honest, I was like, well, if Zank is still on it, I'm going to listen to it. And then, yeah, I was hooked from episode one. When do you listen to it? Like, how do you listen? Do you listen at work or do you listen on the way home? Um, I usually listen to it um, on – usually on Wednesdays. I'm driving on Wednesday nights to work yeah. and back, and uh, I'll just listen to it then. Um, usually takes me – it used to take me about two days to get through a full podcast because it's so long now, but – now, sometimes I yeah. take the super long way home just to finish listening to it. Oh, that's nice. So you do it on purpose so you can fit the whole cast in, huh? Yeah, so that way I'm not trying to go back and wait, what was it that he said? And try to click it all together. But yeah. Well, when you're driving home and you're listening to the podcast, is there ever a segment or something? Like, what's your favorite segment that makes you laugh so hard you almost drive off the road? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, Instagram questions are always hilarious, but there was one week in particular I was working a late shift and I was driving to work and I listened to it the day, the next day on a Thursday. And it was when Def Bob Lars first started. I think it was just Def. Oh, Lars the first. debut. Yeah. You know, he wasn't even deaf yet. It was before they even realized he was deaf. But when Zenka <laughs> and Jake were just going back and forth, man, and literally I'm driving through a part of the freeway where there's no shoulder. There's just walls on both sides. And I'm literally yeah. like trying to keep my truck on the road. Cause I'm like, don't, don't laugh too hard. <laughs> Yeah, they started saying that uh, Lars's tongue is way too big for his mouth, mm -hmm. and then they had him talking funny at first, and then yeah. they went on to Deaf Lars. Yeah, then it became Deaf Bob Lars, and just the character evolved over time. 
it was, that, it was fucking magic. That's dude. how that's you build a character right there. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. They should be in charge yep. of Lars Sullivan. <laughs> they should. Well, starting out as a Stinger fan all the way back when, um, watching wrestling up until now, do you have a favorite theme song you listen to? A reoccurring, you know, like a song you listen to when you work out or, again, when you're driving? Um, or a ringtone? I was really big on Edge's theme song when he first became the Radar oh. Superstar and he started using that new theme song. You know, oh, the one with lyrics. Yeah, you know, you think you know me. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And yeah, I will listen to that yeah. to get pumped up. But um, every morning, actually, I have, a, as one of my alarms, I have AJ Styles' theme song. Nice. And then now, now driving into work, I'll listen to The Fiend's theme song just to freak everybody out as I pull in to the parking lot. Dude, that song, <laughs> that song of the year right there. When, when it's oh, my yeah. birthday next month, I'm going to be blasting that fucking song all the way to Vegas. I love that song. Oh, you know what, man? I'll be blasting it too on your birthday, just because, you know, just, just, just for you. All right, in honor, in honor. <laughs> yeah, in honor. <laughs> well, we we touched on this already, but was Sting your favorite superstar of all time, or did you have a different one? Um, he was at the time, and I still think, you know, just because he was my first superstar, I liked. He is, but yeah. I've definitely started. I had other ones as time went on. Um, Edge was is definitely probably my number two or three. And then, oh, um, wow. and then uh, I really liked Randy Orton back in like 2008, 2009 when he first got the sleeve tattoos and started punting people in the head. When he punted that old man yeah. in the middle of the ring. Yeah, whoever, whatever <laughs> happened to that old guy? I don't know. I don't know. I think he went on to he, – he created some kind of bogus football league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sadistic Orton is always the best Orton. It is. Babyface yes. Orton, I um, care less about. Favorite match of all time in your years and years of wrestling, the match that you would show someone to get them into wrestling, what would that be? Oh, that match would be Mick Foley and Edge at WrestleMania. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. I think it's 21, the hardcore match. It was 22. 22. Yeah, we yeah. get them, put them through the flaming table. Yeah, that match. I literally, like every other month, I'll just randomly, like, I'm going to watch that match. I'm going to watch just a clip of it. And next thing I know, I'm watching the whole thing. And I still. It was a hardcore match, right? Yeah, it was a hardcore match. Uh, this is r- right before uh, One Night Stand when they became the co hardcore champions. So, is that your favorite gimmick match, a hardcore match? Um, yeah, I would say. Just because I just like yeah. straight hardcore. Like when they say no holds barred or you know, the other things, I mean, those are cool, but a hardcore match, it just seems like anything can happen. Yeah, no holds barred or unsanctioned hardcore, it all means the same. Yeah. Someone, someone's getting a kendo stick and uh-huh. one person will be put through a table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you grow up playing the WWE video games? I did. Um, what pretty was much... your favorite? Ooh. Um, you know what? One of my favorites was... Because I, 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 don't, I don't have any current video games because otherwise I'd just be in my house playing video games all the time. And, you know, I got a kid now and a job and, you know, I got a mortgage to pay, so... I can't just be playing video games all day, but yeah. the last one I had was, um, <laughs> I believe it was 2K17, and I played that oh, thing okay. just nonstop. As a 27-year-old man, I just played it nonstop. Well, who was your go-to character? Um, I like to create a character. That was always my favorite thing. Yeah. Um, but if I had to pick one of them, I'm probably going to get crap for this, but I'm a Roman guy, so I would always play Oh, for... I thought you were going to say Edge. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, yeah. Roman. Yeah, he's got some. He's got a good move set, and all his stats are like at ninety. Yeah, that's so why he's usually the, the the go-to good character to be. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't be beat. Exactly. Yeah, we. Uh, I grew up being obsessed with the creative characters, and that was my favorite thing to do in all of the video mm-hmm. games. So I would always make my friends and family. And back when it was on the 360, you could put your own music to your own music tracks for yeah. their entrance yeah. music. And every year, me and my friends would get together and just laugh and watch all the dumb shit I created. <laughs> and now Jake has kind of brought that back doing the after party pro wrestling. It's, I get I get a kick out of that. I know I'm still waiting for a Mr. Underscore Tryon character, Jake. You know, just throwing <laughs> that out there, Jake. <laughs> you know what's funny when um you said you're you're a parent now and you got a mortgage to pay and everything. That was 
when I first started looking at your profile, because I think we became friends a while mm. back, I was like, oh, this dude's a dad. And it's always I'm always curious to know when do you actually get time to watch wrestling? Do, do you have to like ask your wife, like, please give me this hour so you can watch the wrestling without the kid jumping all over you? You know what? Like as far as Raw and SmackDown goes, like it's I'm usually watching it on Hulu or I'm watching clips on YouTube. Like I hardly ever get to watch a full episode. But whenever there's yeah. a pay per view on, I just always tell her, "Hey, yeah, this show's on tonight." She goes, oh, "Okay," and she um she lets me watch it. The coolest thing, my favorite event is the Royal Rumble, and for this year's Rumble, yes. I got off of work at midnight and I told her like, "Hey, I'm probably gonna be up all night watching this," and I got home and there was a <laughs> six pack of beer. And a bag of chips and a note that said, enjoy the Royal Rumble. Wow. So, so she gets it. I picked the winner. She better get a really good birthday present this year, or anniversary present for that yeah. one. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does she ever watch? Or is she just like, meh? Um, she watches with me sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard now with the kid because one of us has to be paying attention to him so he doesn't kill himself. So that's usually, yeah, that's that's usually her. <laughs> but uh, before, like before he was born, she watched. She would watch WrestleMania. She'd watch some of the big ones with me. She didn't understand anything that was going on. Like she yeah. watched. She watched the Mania with me when uh, Seth Rollins cashed in his Money in the Bank, and I had to. Ex- I was there. I to ex- you were there. Oh yeah. man, that's amazing. But um, I had to explain to her what the Money in the Bank was and all that. And by the end, she goes, <laughs> "I don't get it, but it was cool." <laughs> Yeah, usually casual fans, like if nothing else, they love watching Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Yeah. That'll always they'll sit through that, but mm. all the other nonsense they're like, I got better things to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> um well, you kinda almost answered my Instagram question I had for you. I was digging through my Instagram questions and I was gonna ask you, what are your WWE pay per view go to snacks? Yeah, it's usually some kind of beer and some kind of chips. Got to be spicy chips, though. Beer and spicy chips. Yeah. Any brand specific? Well, I think for um for WrestleMania this year it was the Doritos, the Flame and Nacho, that new one of it. Oh shit! The, the Flame and Hot Nacho or whatever it was that they came out with. Yeah. Oh, and I, all I know is I was about well, two matches in and I was like, "Oh, this bag's almost gone." <laughs> are you a Coors guy or Budweiser guy, Steve Weiser guy? <laughs> um. You know, it all kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. I don't discriminate against any of them. Yeah. As long as I get the job done, if you know what I mean. Of course, <laughs> of course. I, I hear you, man. I yeah. always got my beer next to me yeah. uh, for every pay-per-view as well. Well, my friend, you get a privilege. You get to decide the next round of the finishing move crumb offs. And your Ooh, okay. moves you get to pick from, you get to decide whether each edge proceeds or the claymore kick proceeds to the next round what Ooh, say that's you? a tough one that's we a tough Razor one Ramon's finisher the elevated like power bomb which has got him an intercontinental championship versus drew mcintyre's pretty much leg muscle missile coming to your yeah. jaw knocking your ass out he hasn't won too many championships with it but he was nxt champion I believe it's still an impressive move, but this is all up to you. Go. F- what do you think? Um, I would have gone with the Razor's Edge, um, but you know it, was, it seemed like it was always a dominant finisher. But then remember, Roman was using it for a while and never won a match with it. Roman so, used the Razor's Edge. Yeah, just a handful of times, and it seemed like he never won, he would never win a match. He'd he'd do like a sit down version of it. Yeah. But um but yeah, but I'm gonna go Oh yeah, 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 you're right. That's right. But then I think I'm gonna have to go with the Claymore kick. Only because when I first saw it, I thought it was just a normal big boot. And I'm like, well that's kinda yeah. dumb. Until I realized he elevated it and then when he slaps his legs and makes that sound, I'm like, ooh, it just sounds painful. So I'm going with the claymore. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Nice. All righty. <laughs> Thanks to Mr. Underscore Tryon. Claymore moves on to the next round. And next week's guest will determine the next set of moves that move on. But I won't reveal it. (laughs) Okay. Now, let us talk about your Survivor Series story. All right. That that story alone, when they read it on air, made me laugh so hard. And (laughs) I personally, you personally get my nomination 
for Hall of Fame this year because oh, of that story, dude. Thanks. Bro. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you. And I have a special request for you. Okay. Can you do another story, but this time a Royal Rumble story with the SRAP characters? And all of us, all of us too. Okay. I'll put you up to the task for this coming uh, week's podcast. See if they uh, read it on air. Hopefully they do. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I can definitely do that. Well, thank you very much, sir. I cannot wait to hear All right. it. Yeah, that, uh, the Survivor yeah. Series one took me a minute. So, I'm going to try to get this one. I'll try to get this one done by this week's podcast. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Now it is time to review the Steel Roll After Party episode 90, Cake Sitting. Google it. All right. Let's do this. So let me start by asking, did you Google it? I did not. Only because I wanted to because of Jake's reaction. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I got to see what this is. But then I saw, <laughs> then I thought about it. I'm like, do I really want to see what this is? You know, it's for me, I was, I've got done listening to it. It's about 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock on a Wednesday. I'm like, do I really want yeah. this to ruin the middle of my week? I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll pass on it. <laughs> yeah, I, there was no chance in hell I was going to Google that because, you know, as a young man watching and exploring all kinds of different porn, yeah. like on a previous hangover, I explained the hentai and the um, midget porn. Oh, yes, and, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to see any cake sitting. All right. I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I stumbled onto the feet porn, which I do not understand why people love feet, <laughs> I was done Googling different kinds of porn, just straight up sex, and I'm good. Yeah, cake sitting, yeah. So, I think some things are very left to the imagination. We'll leave the cake sitting uh, brain damage for Jake. Yeah. He, can, he can be haunted by that forever. Yep. But this week, we got some more vocabulary from Zanka, which I had never heard before, such as prison pocket. Yes, that and was. <laughs> the brown wind of doom. The brown wind yeah. <laughs> You can always rely on Zanka for some new vocabulary. Have you heard of the word grundle? I think I have. I don't know. It might have just been on the podcast. I, I don't think I've heard I've it. I've never my... heard of that. And Jake was saying, really? That's a real common term. Like, I never even yeah, heard I know. that before. Yeah. The, the, world, the world wants to know. Try on, can't get on board with L. What was that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I needed to clarify that. So the original hashtag was supposed to say something like, you know, hashtag Zanka, you're the man. I love you. If you need to ever need to hide a body, I got you. But I can't get on board with liking Rowan. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody would have been devastated if you would have said Lars. But oh, yeah, know, yeah no. Rowan, I, that's very understandable. Yeah, as soon as I. <laughs> As soon as he read that, I was waiting for that on the question. I was going to see what his reaction was. And then when I heard him just say L, I was like, L? What do you mean? I went home and I looked at him like, oh, I got cut off somehow. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to put in a lot of work to get rolling over with uh, with everybody. Because so far, he just sounds like uh, regular Lars instead of deaf Lars. Yeah, he just sounds like normal Lars. Yeah, he's, he's going to take some time. Also, I want to give you another shout out for your hashtag. I don't want reparations. <laughs> I just want a shirt. That popped me big Did time, it? man. That was hella funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And, um, oh, yeah, by the way, Sticks Adam broke Jake. He did. Uh, that was... he, after that question, Jake was just done. So I, I feel so bad for, <laughs> for Bretsky's question. And uh, You know, man, I, I knew that was... I knew that was coming. The last few weeks I've been listening, I'm like, it's going to get to him one day. That's it's why, I, yeah. you, you know, I love my hashtags, but I try to stay away from any of the Jake Touches Kids hashtags. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like Sticks Adam uh, grabbed the reins with that one, and uh, he's just, he's continuing. I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny. Jake needs to learn how to take jokes better is what I, I think. I mean, I it is so. a little over. He's he's going overboard with it, but it still is funny whenever he reacts like that. And Zenka's right. He goes, the more you push back, the more funny it's going to be. <laughs> exactly. And the more he's going to do it, too. The more we know we can get a reaction out of him. <laughs> exactly. I got to apologize right now to Julius Caesar because he posted the sandwich question first on Instagram. 
I woke up hungry and I was thinking, do I want a sandwich or a burger? And then I was thinking, huh, I wonder what they like on a sandwich. So then I just put that on there real quick without knowing that Julius Caesar posted it first. I apologize. I should have switched it to perfect burger. I take full responsibility. My bad. Yeah, I thought I thought it was like one of those national sandwich days or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> now and then I, I ended that podcast wanting a sandwich. So thank exactly. You guys. Talking about the Texas toast, the yeah. ham melt, and the grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, man, I'm hungry. And also, Tryon, you were incredible at the questions. This week's question inspired me inspired. to create some – it inspired me to create some generic art. So later on tonight, pay attention to, to the page because I will ha- be posting hashtag Decent DX. All right. <laughs> they made all the choices on who's going to be who so I'm going to post it that was an excellent question thank and you. your hashtags are always funny thank you I got to give you props man thanks man see you're a first ballot hall of famer here see oh, I hope so it's like everybody know we I, I do want to ask you something about your thoughts on the Andy versus Sam feud what what are your thoughts on the battle raps and the the jabs at each other um Andy's a man. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the spoonful of truth. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Andy. Andy's killing it. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't too sure about it at first. I was kind of watching, like, what's going on here, and then yeah, I got into it after a while. I'm Team Andy. <laughs> oh, Team Andy. Oh, he's gonna love to hear that. Yeah. Okay, uh, we started this week's week two of NXT on USA with an undisputed balcony. Did you catch that? Like they all came did... out like on this one section of the of the screen, and they all had their titles. Yeah, watching. I thought that was pretty sick. I liked the way that uh, they all had the belts up, and you know we already knew that they were all draped in gold, but seeing it like that, I was like, wow. They're the rulers of the NXT kingdom. And actually, you forgot, though, what they actually started off with was Triple H trying to brainwash us by constantly repeating, we are NXT. I Did you notice walking. they showed it from a different <laughs> angle? Yeah. Because the, the original angle is when the camera, I mean, the mic cut out. Mm-hmm. And this time it was just at full. You could understand exactly what he was saying. I thought that was funny. Yeah. And we kicked off the show tonight with one of the most impressive matches I think I've ever seen on NXT. We had Bask in His Glory, Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. I can't say that name. I think it's Dijakovic, but I like your pronunciation better. Sounds like I had a stuttering problem. The power... The speed of Keith, holy shit, dude, that was a good match. Dude, I was in awe watching that. I mean, that's got to be... I mean, I, I've seen Keith Lee take on other people before with Lars, and then there was this other dude with long hair who looked uh, bouncy. But him <laughs> versus Dominic, my God, impressive have... with... Sorry, yeah, have, have, you seen their, have you seen their other two matches that they've had? I did not. Okay, the first one... It was pretty impressive, but had a shoddy finish. I mean, they had a double count out. The second one uh-huh. was almost a repeat of the first one, but with a finish. And so when I heard that they were doing this one, I'm like, I guess, you know, have a third match, whatever. I love Keith Lee, but I was like, I'm really not too into it. Dude, Yeah. by the end of it, I was standing up just, what? I, I was like, I a big man should not move like up that. Off the floor, dude. that, that I, and you, you've seen their three matches which match was the best one out of the three? This one. This one. Especially, this one? Okay, good. Yeah, especially with – um, it, it's a lot of the same moves, you know, the them fighting on the top uh, top turnbuckle, trying to get over the top rope. But that Canadian Destroyer off of the top rope by Dijek Gata Gata, however you pronounce it, that dude was <laughs> – that was amazing. But then Keith Lee's almost Undertaker-like uh, kick out and then doing the exactly. John Cena roll through and all that, I was just – Wow. Jo- Dominic chokeslam Keith on the fucking ring. Yeah. 
I'm surprised the ring apron held up on that. Same here. Can you imagine how bad that hurt? Uh, I, 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 it made me, uh, it made me shudder when I saw it. I'm like, oh, I w- it made me feel pain almost. And it was- Keith with the corkscrew plancha to Dominic. Holy shit! That unbelievable man that was a butthole clinching moment right yeah. there i was like oh please don't mess up <laughs> you know what man this match made me feel bad about myself because i'm a large man as well you know i'm, I'm uh-huh. around i'm a little bit a little bit smaller than keith lee but i was like man these guys are doing flips and doing crazy moves and doing all this you know i have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning sometimes dude i understand <laughs> i sweat when i fucking tie my shoes so how are these yeah. guys doing the corkscrew planchas and fucking yeah. li- lifting each other it's just it's crazy but it keith lee 6'2 340 pound moonsault my god yeah. unbelievable we that got dominic wild. with the like you said the avalanche canadian destroyer from the top rope mm-hmm. but keith lee wins with his signature big bang catastrophe awesome i didn't know that's what it was called off. either that's an awesome name yeah, I, I paid attention tomorrow. I had to watch it a couple times. But, yeah, yeah. that's what he calls it. Then we come up with the Candice LeRae versus Shayna Baszler preview. And I noticed that Morrow called Candice Tenacious C. Tenacious C, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very weird. And Beth, uh, as speaking of commentary, I, I think Beth is getting better. Beth is getting better than Renee, I, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hands down. She started off a little news. rough, but she she's definitely improved over time. Yeah. And, and then I'm not just saying that because she's married to Edge. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh? You're an Edge fanboy. I yep. forgot about that. <laughs> and then we get Dakota Kai coming out. Uh, Making a I thought it was kind of turn. funny. I, I thought it was funny that the Titan Tron is her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it was it was cool. She, she finally comes cool. back. Dakota Kai, the captain of Team Kick, taking on mm. Ty and Nara. And um, I got a, I got a, you know, I'm a man. I, I got a, a sick, kind of a sick way of watching women's wrestling. I don't know if I'm the only one. I can't be, but I cannot help but notice when women have camel toes when they come out there. <laughs> yeah. Like whenever women start wrestling, that's where my eyes go. I'm like, does she have a camel toe? There's a camel toe. There's a camel toe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, dude, it's like, it's like you're, you're not trying to be a pig, but stuff like that sticks out. It's just noticeable, you know. I mean, because when yeah. dudes come out, we don't look for uh, camel knuckle, or what do they call no, we don't. knuckle. We're, we just see them beating the shit out of each other. But when the chicks come out, we're looking for nip slips, we're looking for butt cracks, we're looking for camel toes, because you know that's how God made us. It is. <laughs> but uh, um, Dakota wins with the GTK, which is basically the GTS. Yeah, what do you heard think it, of this match? A... I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it was um. It, it probably would have benefited the show if they put it in the second hour. I think it's going to get to the second hour was kind of fell off a little bit. Are you familiar so, with Dakota Kai's past work? Not really. Nah, me neither. I know not that Shayna there. beat the shit out of her. That, that's all didn't I she, remember. Didn't she break her leg or she just came back from an injury? Yeah, it was, had something much, to do but, with her leg. Yeah. I mean, it good for her. It was a decent match. Yeah, Dakota yeah. Kai, she's, you know. She's. I think she has the potential to be a future star. Maybe like a, maybe like a more slim Bailey, like Bailey yeah. minus the booty. Yeah, Bailey minus the booty. Then we smash cut to Killian Dane sitting in the outdoor patio by himself, very awkwardly. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. Pre- previewing their match later with Matt Riddle. Mm-hmm. Then we come to that was the main event next, the street fight. For the future yeah. NXT title shot, Matt Riddle versus Killian Dane. What do you think about this match? Did you like how it ended? Did you like the spots? I did like the spots. The ending, it always kind of throws me off when you have like a street fight kind of match and it ends in a tap out. Because it's like, you know, you yeah, just got to do all this stuff bizarre. and then an arm bar puts you down. But, but then again, it's exactly. coming from Matt Riddle, so it makes sense. And Matt Riddle's known mainly for his, you know, technical wrestling and his submission wrestling. Then we got this mountain of hair, Killian Dane, with um, crashing through the barricade with Riddle and three Vader bombs, but, kendo stick across the chair. But that dynamic to me kind of made me kind of remind me of like the Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon street fight from King of the Ring, where you have one guy who's not known as a street fighter, known as you know 
a technical wrestler and a submitter, you know, someone who's more polished going hardcore. It kind of gave him like a new layer, like an yeah. onion. Like he has another layer now. He has new skills mm. that we didn't know he had. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's a good ob- observation. Yeah. Another thing I notice about Riddle that kind of bothers me, no shoes. Yeah. No knee pads, no elbow pads. Dude comes out in his Tommy John's ready to wrestle. Exactly. It's it's crazy how he doesn't have any gear on. I mean, there's he's got to have some eventually. What do you think? Because there's wear and tear on your body out there. And the knee pads and shoes and elbow pads, that's meant to help you and make your career last longer. Like, what is he trying to prove? He already makes me look fatter than I am. Yeah. Why can't he just put on some protection? <laughs> Something. You know, just put on some shoes, man not that hard exactly didn't i thought he used to have shoes when he first started in nxt like his first match he had boots on and then went to bare feet but all i remember yeah, is he's rocking the crocs and he just throws them off or something when the match starts yeah but yeah the whole no no gear at all just really throws me off you know same thing like with ronda rousey she doesn't have knee pads on you know there's a few other people that they don't wear like when cody rhodes for a while didn't have the knee yeah. pads it just looks it just looks odd to me like you need something there it kind of made his chicken legs stand out a little bit more. Yeah, it did. <laughs> well, yeah, like you said, Matt Riddle, he won with the Fujiwara armbar. Mm-hmm. And next week we will see Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole, I believe. You know, yeah, next week, you know, the same the same night the AEW Dynamite the uh, first debuts, hour, you know. The first hour of NXT was fantastic i loved it it was jam-packed full of action we had the Mm -hmm. keith lee match at the start we had the street fight at the end and then sadly to say the second hour i think it fell off big time like i was kind of disappointed a little same here i mean it felt it felt longer than an hour i think it was only like 47 minutes but it felt like it just dragged on and that um i mean the rhea ripley match I mean, I mean, I know we're getting getting to it. But that Rhea Ripley match was okay, Cause, yeah. Because I, you know, I like Rhea Ripley in some bizarre way. Um, yeah, I like Rhea Ripley, so that one was fine with me. But then after that, it really dropped off. We started, like you said, we started off with Rhea Ripley versus Caden Carter. Carter has Kaden the Carter, long braided yeah. hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the whole entire match was okay, but my eyes were fixated on the chunky female ref. I don't know why I'm a huge fan of her. Like I couldn't take my eyes off her. I was watching all her mannerisms and the way she was Uh, refing. I I was a bigger fan of Jessica Carr, the female ref than the actual match. Rhea Ripley, she's, she's hot. And I know Jake's a big fan, but it was an Mm -hmm. okay match. Ripley Ripley wins with the riptide. It's just a a, handle power bomb. Yeah. It was a squash match. It wasn't a squash match. Yeah, pretty much. And then yeah. following that match, we had Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan take on Ever Rise. Yeah, I didn't. The Canadians. Yeah, that one. That's where I really think it started to drop off. I was like, those are just a bunch of people that no one really is behind. No, you know. Yeah. I mean, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch are fan- like incredible wrestlers. They are, especially on NXT UK. But the crowd was just. Eh. I don't know. I don't think it would have held the the USA audience, so I'm glad they put it on the WWE Network. However, it was just lackluster for me. What What do you think with the yeah. way the match went? Same here. I mean, it was disappointing because you know most uh, NXT cards, the tag team matches, or that's what I look forward to because that's where all the action's at. Usually yes. seems like, and especially when you got teams like Undisputed Era, the Street Profits, you know, Revival. Um, American Alpha back in the day, like you have the the, the tag team bar is set pretty high. But then to see this, yeah. it was you know these guys these guys did a great job. You know they put on a decent decent match. You know not not um, not great, but it, it was it wasn't it's something okay. to run home and tell your mom about. It, it wasn't was a, you know a, a good exhibition, I guess. Yeah, it's good good wrestling, but you know just yeah, that's what it was. I thought the finisher was okay. The the elevated DDT double yeah. team that they did, it, it was fine. This is what they're. But I don't know. Maybe this is what they'll be cutting out of the Hulu versions if it, if it ever goes to Hulu. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, we follow that up with uh, Cameron Grimes versus Raul Mendoza. What did you think about this match? I got to be honest with you. I didn't see this one. I don't know if it I was okay. I mean, it was. 
I, I um I saw like a little highlight video of it on YouTube afterwards. I think it was on YouTube, but or somebody was reviewing it, but because I, I realized I had missed that, I'd missed a chunk of the show, so I wanted to make sure I knew what was going on. But it was all right. If the the clip that I saw, they kept the camera kept panning to Cameron Grimes' hat, which was kind of odd. Yeah, but he's the I, I paid attention to the match. It was okay. Cameron Grimes, you can tell, is going to be a future star. They just, I guess, they wanted to showcase him and. He wins with his finisher, the double stomp, the standing double stomp, which was it was fine. Yeah. But um, hopefully they do more character development because they're just throwing these guys out there without, with basically zero character development. They don't let them cut mm-hmm. promos or have a Nothing. you know a, a, a presence that makes you want to a presence that compels you. It's yeah. just a straight up match. It seems like they were trying to kill time. Leading up to mm-hmm. the main event, we had Imperium show up. Minus Walter, yeah. Versus Kushida, and the returning. Well, they've been there. Fashion Police with their new music yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of this match? Um. Now, with the fact that the Fashion Police were the mystery partners, it kind of it popped me and let me down at the same time. Just because it was like, yeah. I was waiting to see who it was going to be, and then when it was the Fashion Police, it was I did not expect it at all. Yeah. I did not expect them. But uh, so that one part was cool. But then I was like, eh, OK, let's see how it goes, because I'll be honest with you. I thought it was going to be a typical WWE thing where they're just going to find they had a bunch of British guys. And they're just going to find some uh, some Japanese guys to throw together. Well, honestly, I, I thought like, it was going to be Mustache Mountain. I thought because Imperial ooh, was yeah. rolling with Mustache Mountain and British Strong Style, I thought we were going to see Tyler Bay. And Trent Seven strut down the ring to help out Kushida, but yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, typical that w- that WWE style. Yeah, <laughs> typical WWE style. They could have had fucking Ty and Ty come out there with in, with Kushida because yeah. you know WWE loves pairing the races with each other, and it's just so <laughs> weird do. to do that shit. <laughs> but New yeah, day. Was, was oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Big E. Um, yep. <laughs> we had Walter come out and destroys Kushida, basically. I don't even think there was a finish to the match. It was cool to see all these guys together. I'm not really on the Kushida bandwagon yet. I need to see more from him. But yeah, it, it's it, it's cool that they have the uh, NXT UK tie-in with Imperium. I'm not sure how that's going to go on moving forward. But I I I think it's it just it's elevating Kushida, basically. They want this little guy to seem bigger than he is and to become a bigger yeah. star. That's why they put him at the end of the show. Imperium yeah. is just dominant. Walter is amazing. I cannot wait guy. to see what they do with them in the future. <laughs> and I here. believe it was uh, Andy who brought it up. Uh, upcoming War Games match. Imagine Imperium versus the Undisputed Era in a War Games match. Ooh, dude, I just got chills right now. That would be fucking amazing, uh, dude. That would. But then again, the Undisputed Era has been in the past two War Games matches. Maybe they want to do something different, but I don't know. Why? I mean, but, you know, if it's, not, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I think so this upcoming this. week's NXT is going to be ten times better than this one was. I think Because, like be. you said, you said they're, this is the first week they're going head-to-head because the numbers were down this week mm-hmm. for NXT. But um, they're just working. They, you know, they're introducing the audience right now. They're just giving them samples of NXT. I think this coming Wednesday is going to blow our fucking balls off. We got the NXT and we got AEW Dynamite. Are you going to be watching both the same day? Yes. Yeah, I will. Just because I'm going to have to, you know. I'm not. Yeah. I, I like AEW for what they've done so far. I'm not a huge AEW mark, but. I'm going to give them a chance just because I think that they're going to do something revolutionary. And then I think it's just going to elevate the level of NXT having a competition with them. I mean, they're throwing Matt, great they're throwing Matt everybody. Riddle and yeah, they're throwing Matt Riddle and Adam Cole on the USA network. That's like a takeover before WrestleMania kind of match right there. Yeah. And they're just throwing it on USA. So if they're, if they're doing that, I'm interested to see what else is going to happen. Do you have any predictions of what's going to happen in that match? Ooh. Um, what I'm afraid of is it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a it's not it's gonna be a no contest or a DQ for Matt Riddle or DQ win for Matt Riddle because of um, undisputed era gets involved. Yeah, yeah. I know that there's 
this this makes no sense, but it would be awesome. You know, they should have Matt Riddle just uh, completely destroy Adam Cole and then have the rest of the Undisputed Era turn on Adam Cole and Matt Riddle be the new leader. leader. <laughs> oh, that, it would make no sense, but it'd be something crazy to do. <laughs> and then Adam Cole gets drafted to SmackDown and teams with Kevin Owens. Oh, dude, there you go. Book Damn. It. I got. I got to send a message to to WWE now. See if I can make that happen. Hurry, tweet him. Hurry. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, man. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, um, thank uh, you. You're an excellent guest, man. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. It's always great getting to know the Steel Row After Party universe here. And um, well, as always, all hail Linda's Bush. Yes, sir. Thanks again to Mr. Underscore Tryon for being a great guest today on The Hangover. And I cannot wait to hear his booking of the Steel Reel After Party Royal Rumble. If you want to follow the Steel Reel After Party podcast on Instagram, it's at Steel Reel to us. Want to follow the host? It's at After Party Jake, at After Party Zanka. If you go to Facebook, search Steel Reel After Party and hit that like button. If you want to cover up your nips with some Steel Reel merchandise, that's shop.spreadshirt.com slash Steel Reel After Party. You can get shirts like the Spoonful of Truth, Jake's Quotes, Finding Fuji, along with the After Party Pro Wrestling merchandise. And since you're on YouTube already, why don't you head on over and check out the After Party Pro Wrestling episodes. According to Jake... The next episode includes a super special secret match. So I can't wait to see that. Thank you for listening. And until next week, all hail Linda's Bush.